Hi, welcome back to Everyday Behavior. I'm Dr. Mary Ann Shepard, and it's my pleasure to bring you this video today and this information. Uh, today, we are talking about social skill assessment tools. So this uh, series, Series 10, is all about um, instructional assessment and using assessment to develop and guide those IEP goals. Uh, and so we're talking about social skill assessments today. Why are social skill assessments so important? Because social skill assessments a lot of times lead to a lot of behavior challenges that we see. And with the incidence and prevalence of autism increasing, autism is primarily a deficit in social skills. And so it's important to um, address social skills as part of our IEP development because a lot of times the social skills themselves are leading to barriers in instruction, leading to barriers uh, within the school, whether that's on the playground uh, or in the lunchroom or just in the classroom. But also a lot of times social skill deficits also lead to behavior problems for children with a wide range of dis disabilities, including autism, uh, ADHD, and to some degree, uh, conduct disorder, but also social skills are something that you can address with a wide range of disabilities. So what are some of the assessment tools that you can use to guide those social skill um, goals and uh, objectives in your IEP? We're gonna talk about four different ones today. Uh, the first one we're gonna talk about is the Gilliam Autism Rating Scale. Uh, the Gilliam was originally supposed to be a diagnostic tool. Um, it's not, uh, its primary utility right now is not as a diagnostic tool. It is a, a screener for autism. But where I like the Gilliam best is in developing those uh, treatment or intervention goals. And so the Gilliam is a brief rating scale that can be completed by the teacher or the parent or both. It um, provides uh, six um, subscales of social intervention or areas that you can intervene on social behavior. But what I love about the Gilliam is it has a manual for instructional goals. So for every item on the Gilliam, there is an instructional goal and objectives for each item on there. And so it's really helpful in developing those measurable objective goals without you having to go to the drawing board to do it. Another one that's really helpful and widely used in treatment, um, especially in the outpatient setting, is the social responsiveness scale. You might have heard of it, uh, referred to as the SRS. It provides a very clear picture of the social impairments. It assesses the social awareness, information, like social information processing, um, that back and forth communication uh, that happens in social interactions. So being able to listen and um, provide information. So it's a really good scale for assessing the level of social skill deficits but it also is a really good scale in developing those treatment goals. Uh, the CARS, uh, all of these are rating scales. Uh, so the social responsiveness scale is a rating scale completed by parents or teachers, the same with the CARS. Uh, the thing about the CARS that is really nice is it has a measure for high functioning autism. So a lot of times we uh, have a lot of tools for those foundational skills, but we don't always have tools for higher functioning autism. And so the CARS does have a measure for high functioning autism um, with that parent rating form, but it is applicable for children uh, from ages two um, and older, and it assesses social skills on 15 different areas. So I encourage you to look into the CARS. The last is the social communication questionnaire. Um, so it helps evaluate social skills in children over four uh, and is very helpful in that treatment planning, educational intervention, and measuring change over time. So these are four different assessment tools. They're all going to cost a little bit uh, per rating form or per student that you administer them to. However, they all provide valuable information on social skills and sometimes it's hard to break down social skills and know what exactly am I looking for? What exactly do I need to assess? What exactly do I need to instruct on? Where are the social skill deficits? We know when a child has good social skills, we know when a child has awkward um, social interactions, and we know when a child has bad social skills, but what are the actual skills that are missing? And so all of these tools are gonna help give you a better um, glimpse or better insight into the child's social skill deficits and where you should be providing that instruction. 
I hope you find this helpful. Uh, if you like this information, please like us on Facebook and YouTube. Please follow us uh, and that way you'll know when new videos come out. And I encourage you to look for additional resources on our website at www.everydaybehaviors.com. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.